Hello, this is Miss Povey and today we're going to be looking at how to write a speech about school. So the first thing I'd like you to do is go and get a pen and paper please. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to do this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to try and match the technique with the example on the right. So, for example, if you look at headline, you then need to find an example of a headline which you could use. So I'm going to give you about five minutes to get all of these matched up. If you're struggling, start with the ones you're confident on, like facts and headline, and then work your way up to the more difficult ones. Okay, stop on the one you're on please. We're going to go through the answers now. So our headline, why school needs to change now. So that's a really clear headline because it's telling you what the speech will be about. Facts. Now I'm sure you've all got this one. 80% of students say they have felt unhappy at school this year. So if you've got those two right, tick them please. I'm going to be marking this out of seven. Third one, emotive language. Now this is one of the more difficult ones, so remember emotive language is emotional or dramatic phrases, a little bit like exaggeration. So my emotive, emotional one is, school causes psychological trauma and anxiety. So it's really dramatic and emotional, isn't it that? Right, fourth one, quotes. 
So look for the quotation marks. It says school is too stressful. Then we've got advanced vocabulary. So these are complex, really good words to be using. Things like unsettled, anxious, paranoid. Then rhetorical questions. I'm sure you've all got this one because you look for the question mark. So what's the point of uniforms? Question mark. Then last one. Sentence variety definition, which is when you switch between short dramatic and long descriptive sentences. So can you give yourself a mark out of seven, please? I'll give you a minute to do that. And can you also put a star next to the techniques you're struggling with so you know to revise those? So I'll give you 30 seconds to do that. Put a star by the techniques you're struggling with and make sure you've written the example next to it as well and then look over it for me. Well done if you've got five or above. Okay, so make sure you've annotated that example one if you're struggling with it and need to make sure you're revising it at the end of this lesson. So how do we write an effective introduction? So if we're trying to write a speech about school, what do we need to be including in it? So in your introduction, you need to show what you'll talk about in your speech. Include an interesting opening sentence. So for example, you could have that rhetorical question from the previous slide, which was, so what's the point in school uniform? And keep it short and clear. So your introduction should be about three sentences. So keep it really clear and concise. So now I've got an example introduction. And I want you to think about why this is a strong introduction. Should homework be banned? This question bothers many students. According to statistics, teachers assign more homework than an average student can handle in one night, more than two hours of work. I'm going to discuss more than 10 reasons why homework should be banned immediately. Okay, so that's my introduction. At the bottom of the screen, you can see that I've given you a yellow box with four techniques in. What I'd like you to do is try and find the examples of each of those technique. So I'm going to give you four minutes, so that's one minute per technique. So try and find each of them and write them down for me, please.
if you're struggling, remember for a rhetorical question, look for a question mark. Facts, look for the numbers. And then metaphor, find where a word's been used in not a realistic way. And then the last one, clear and focus on the question. Just find a clear bit of this introduction where it's focused on school. So you've got two more minutes. Okay, finish the one you're on please. So make sure you've labelled the rhetorical question, the facts, the metaphor and an example of where it's focused on the question which is about school. Right, let's have a look now. So in red we've got our rhetorical question, should homework be banned? So that's a really interesting way to start the paragraph and it tells you exactly what I'm going to talk about. Now fact, so you find these by looking for numbers, so my fact is on average students get two hours of work a night. Then my metaphor, this is the trickiest one to find, so well done if you've got this one. So my metaphor is more homework than an average student can handle, so you're not literally handling the homework, so that is a metaphor. And then lastly, any example which shows it's focused on students or teachers or schools. So really you could use any example from this paragraph to show this one because each sentence is really focused. So I'm either mentioning homework or teachers or students. So give yourself a mark out of four, please. Well done if you've got them all, particularly the metaphor, which is difficult. And if you've missed any, make sure you write down which one you've missed and put a star next to it so you know to revise it for next time. Let's move on to the next paragraph. Firstly, students need time to rest and enjoy their time at home. Two hours of homework is a punishment after sitting eight hours in class. Going outside, dedicating time to friends, attending hobby clubs, helping parents, and yes, watching TV and playing games makes kids feel like kids. Why aren't schools allowing students to have free time? So once again, I've given you a list of techniques at the bottom to find. This time I've given you five. So I need an opening line which shows what the paragraph's gonna be talking about, rhetorical question, so you're gonna look for the question mark for that, Facts, remember to look for numbers for your facts or names. Listing, now you know you look for commas in a list, don't you? So that's an easy way to find listing. And then lastly, emotive language, that's our difficult one. So find a really emotional or dramatic word for that one. I'm going to give you three minutes for this one. Off you go.
Okay, finish on the one you're on, please. So our first one, clear opening line to show the point of the paragraph. So you need to start each paragraph with a sentence saying what you're going to talk about in it. So for example, this one is talking about how students should be allowed to have their own free time. I might do another paragraph saying how homework is usually too difficult for a child to be able to do by themselves. So that first line is really important. So. Students need time to rest and enjoy their time at home. So that tells you my paragraph is going to be talking about why students need time by themselves, not doing any work at home. Then the rhetorical question, that's the bottom line. We look to the question mark. Why aren't schools allowing students to have free time? Then facts. I've got two hours of homework and eight hours in class. So those are my two facts. And now we're on to the more difficult ones. So make sure you've ticked those first two or three. And now we're going on to listing. Going outside, comma, dedicating time to friends, comma, attending hobby clubs, comma, helping parents, comma, and comma, yes, comma, watching TV and playing games. So that is my listing. I'm listing with commas all the good things students can be doing in the evening instead of homework. So for listing, you look for those commas. So really well done if you've got that one, it's a more difficult one. And finally, emotive language. So I'm using the word punishment, which is a really dramatic word. If I'm saying homework's a punishment, it makes students feel bad. So there were five techniques to find in that one. So can you give yourself a mark out of five, please? And once again, can you write out the example if you've got any wrong? I'm going to give you one minute to write down your example if you've got any wrong. Well done for getting those. So this one I've once again shown the different ones. So I've got a clear opening line to show the point of my paragraph. So finally, school is often unnerving and stressful for students and giving homework every day only adds to students' anxiety. So that's me clearly showing that in this paragraph, I'm going to talk about why homework is actually not very good for students' mental health. Now I've got a rhetorical question in red. Would you want to complete two hours of tasks for work once you get home? Question mark. So that is my rhetorical question. Research has shown that 50%, so that's a fact, feel homework is often too demanding to complete without their teacher's help. Alternatively, if homework is too easy, students will find it dull and uninteresting. Clear the answer is no more homework. Okay, so my words in blue, anxiety, demanding and dull are emotive. And if you look at my word in orange, would you? So that's me directly addressing the reader, which is another technique we should be trying to use. So all you need to do is include you or your to be using direct address. So I want you to have one last read through. Check you're confident with all those because we're going to be doing a little quiz in a minute to check you have understood the advanced vocabulary today.
my account. So what you're going to do at the end of the lesson today is to try and include these different techniques in your own paragraph. So I'd like you to try and include a clear opening line, a rhetorical question, facts, direct address and emotive language. So when you're writing in your own speech about school, which it shows you in your work pack on Sam Learning, try and include some of these techniques we've gone over today. And last thing we're going to do together is a little test to see if you've remembered what these words mean. So you can put numbers one to five, please. So number one, dull. What do I mean if I say something is dull? So just write me another word which means dull. Number two, demanding. What am I saying if work is demanding? If it's too demanding to do by yourself? So can you write a definition for that? Number three, complex. So what does complex mean if I say this work you're doing today is complex? Number four, alternatively. So if I say in a sentence, you might think homework is useful, alternatively, you might argue that it's actually too difficult to do by yourself. So what does alternatively mean? And lastly, number five, dedicating. So what does dedicating mean? You might say you've been dedicating too much time to homework. Okay, let's go through the answers. So number one was dull. So dull means boring. It's something you don't enjoy doing. Number two, demanding. So if something's demanding, it's really difficult and you're like you're struggling to do it. So well done if you've got those two right, tick them. Number three, complex. So if work is complex, it's really confusing and it's quite complicated. So tick that one if you've got it. Number four, alternatively. So that means, on the other hand, you may think this. So alternatively, it's just a different word for saying on the other hand. Or in contrast. Number five, dedicating. So that means focusing on something. So... I've been dedicating a lot of time to homework. I've been focusing on homework a lot. That's what you mean by saying dedicating. So give yourself a mark out of five, please. And if you've got any of these wrong, or you just didn't know them, could you add them in please? So write the ones that you didn't know and put a star next to them as well, please. Right, well done guys. I'm sure I'll speak to you again soon.